Hi guys, welcome to my channel Matt Van Gier. Today we've got another amazing species that we found out here in the Western Cape in Montague Springs with Gerry Hans. This is literally Cape Cobra heaven. Gerry last year in one snake season, that's from months of September all the way through to the following year May, he's caught anywhere between 190 to 200 Cape Cobras. Here we have an absolutely stunning yellow morph Cape Cobra. She's on the lighter side, very light yellow, whereas you get the Kalahari ones, which are really deep yellow. So this is Naja Neve, the Cape Cobra. Their distribution is South Africa, Namibia, and a bit into Southwest Botswana. Within South Africa, they tend to be from Central South Africa, from Lesotho Highlands of up to nearly 3,000 meters, all the way down to coastal regions in the Western Cape. These snakes have a huge amount of variability, depending on the area and locale. The Kalahari ones in Namibia are more throughout yellow with a bit of variation into the other colors, your coppers, your browns, your even completely black ones, but that's more down in the Western Cape. So a bit norther, they tend to be more yellow and near the Western Cape, they have variability. In the same locality, you'll have many different color morphs from your bright yellows, your lightish yellows, your coppery colors to your completely black Cape Cobras, which are a little bit more coastal in the Western Cape. So extreme amounts of variability. You also get amazing speckled specimens. So they vary in a wide variety of habitats and distributions. They come from arid deserts up in Namibia and Botswana to full desert, down to Feinbos areas and coastal regions. So they're very adaptable generalist animals. This species of cobra has got the smallest distribution pattern of any other cobra in Africa. So they occur in a very, very small space in comparison to other cobra species, which is really interesting. Their variation or their niches and environment is quite drastically different than a forest cobra, for instance, which has a, has a bigger distribution pattern, but is very localized to forest and moist, humid environments. Like the one we rescued today, with a Cape Cobra stuck inside a power box that we had to saw it out of. So that was an amazing rescue. So if you want to check that out, please check it in the description below. But these are amazing species of cobra. You can see she's actually quite relaxed now. She's not doing too much. I'm just going to tap her a little bit, see if she'll right herself. But she seems quite comfy here. She's rolled in a little ball. So this is potentially one of the deadliest snakes in Africa. And it's purely down to distribution. Now their venom is extremely potent, probably the most toxic of all the African cobras. These guys' venom is neurotoxic. It's a very strong postsynaptic neurotoxin with a mix of potential cardiotoxins and myotoxins. So an extremely, extremely dangerous bite. They're front fanged snakes, short fixed front fangs. So they've got little hollow front fangs which they use to inject their venom. Firstly, they will try to get away from you. Then they will hood up, let you know, hiss and puff before they actually go for a full bite. These guys really actually go for a full bite unless they're really, really provoked, which is only when handling or when snakes are trying to be removed from farms or something of the sort, that's when these snakes will come around and bite you. So again, don't mess with any snakes. If you don't have the experience, leave them alone, observe them from a distance. They're actually beautiful, beautiful creatures. They feed anywhere from mammals to rodents to birds, mice, as well as other snakes. Up to 20% of their diet in certain studies have been other snakes. Some lizards, skinks, I mean anything they can kind of wrap their heads around, they will definitely give it a try. Even carrion on the side of the roads, they've been recorded eating dead snakes on the side of the road. So these guys are really not fussy eaters at all. You can see how relaxed she is. All she wanted to do when I woke her up was get away from me. Now she's realized I'm no danger. I'm, I'm holding her and supporting her very nicely and not threatening her too much. So she's actually quite relaxed at the moment. So as badass as these guys are, they've also got things that they're scared of. Honey badgers, mongoose, meerkats, snake eagles. A lot of things will actually go after to eat these things. Other cobras will come and try and chow on these guys as well. So you can understand why they have this extreme venom, the hooding stance, which is a defense mechanism to be able to ward off larger predators, make itself look bigger and more intimidating.
These snakes, they will mate in June, July, and then be ready to lay eggs September, October, where a female will find an empty termite hole or a mole hole or something of the sort, and she'll go lay those eggs in slightly moist soil in which they will incubate, and then they'll hatch in about two to three months, and they'll be fully fledged little carbon copies of mom and dad with the same variability depending on what genome structure the male and female had. If it was a speckled with a bright yellow, they'd get a whole mixture of them, even throw in some copper colored ones. It's a really, really amazing species of snake. So Cape Cobra is reached between around 1.2 to about 1.4, 1.6 meters on the large end. So this is already a pretty nice sized snake. He's around 1.2 to 1.3 meters, but they do get a lot bigger. And catching this thing on the road yesterday, Whew, it was lightning fast. All it wanted to do was get away from me. And we were lucky enough to have two guys corral her into a little area and we managed to catch her safely. So Kedi's gonna microchip this individual as well. And then we'll go and release her on the road that we found her because this wasn't a rescue. This was a find on the road. If you like this video, please do hit the like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that notifications bell so you check out the next species we catch out here on the expedition South Africa. And remember, stand for what we stand on. <laughs>